Uh, I think I may have screwed something up because after moving those, the temperature is actually a lot better than it was before. So I think this whole video is kind of messed up now. Oh God. As an update for you guys, I talked to the contractor and they think the best route to cool my server closet is gonna be installing a mini split. And I would say that their price is pretty competitive at $5.2,000 or $5,200 whatever you want to call it. And uh, as awesome as it would be to have a dedicated mini split in that server room or closet, that's just way too much money to be spending on a hobby. So I think what we're gonna do is use one of these fans and we're gonna put it in the front of the door to pull in cold air from the base of the door and pump it into the server room. And we already have a fan at the top of the closet so that should be pulling all the hot air out. So we're gonna do a little experimentation and see if adding a fan, like a lot of you suggested, at the base of the door will be enough to help cool the server closet down uh, to below 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So today, right now, it's uh, about 41 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit outside. <sighs> I know you guys don't like it when I use Celsius, so there you go, Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, so we're, let's just go get this installed. I don't, there's really nothing to say. Like, it's a fan. It's 200 CFM. We'll see if it's enough. Come on, let's go. So some of you are probably wondering why I didn't just go ahead and install a vent or a, a fan in the front of the door from the beginning. And the real reason why is because I just didn't want like there to be a bunch of cables that were hanging out every single time I opened and closed the door. And I didn't want to cable manage those. Well, it's not really a cable management problem. It's just more of just like, it's kind of ugly. Um, in, in my opinion anyway. But we may be forced to go down that route anyway, depending on how this goes. Now I'm hoping that adding the fan doesn't really do anything for us overall. And well, I mean, I'm hoping it does help, but I'd really rather it not be too helpful. Um, so that way I don't have to have a fan in the front of my door because <laughs> I think it's kind of ugly. Um, but hey, you know, if it works, it works. And if it works really well, then I guess we'll just roll with it. All right, so does this thing even fit? Nope, we're gonna need some tools. We're gonna have to cut the door even more than I already have. Okay, so right now the closet's at 79 degrees at the top of the closet. And at the bottom it is 71 degrees Fahrenheit. So not terribly hot on the on bottom, uh, but not terribly warm on top either. I remember it's like 41 degrees outside, so... Um, Overall, not bad, comfortable temperature. But we also have a lot of stuff turned off because of my switch that I thought died to heat, but actually died because of a bad power supply. So we, when we get this fan installed, we'll turn everything back on and monitor the temperature to see what it'll, what it'll be at with the both fans installed and running. Well, if the door wasn't already ruined before, it's gonna be ruined now for sure. So thankfully they provide us a stencil that we can use to figure out where the holes, or where we need to expand this hole. Um, doesn't look like we need to take too much off, but I'm basically gonna use a Dremel and just sand all of this down to make the hole bigger. Um, that way, well, we can stick in the device. Probably some of my best work of all time. Perfectly square, as you can tell. 
Yeah, really proud of this work. Wish I had the right tools. Don't ever hire me for anything. So this is what I wanted to avoid by sticking a fan in here, just like all these wires just kind of hanging out everywhere. And then this is the temperature probe wire that I'm just like, that I'm just trying to stick somewhere as high as I can uh, because obviously the air that's down here is much cooler than the air up there. So I believe that says it's 76 right now, but the door's been open for a while, so that's fine. And then the air down towards the bottom here, where that temp this temperature probe is, is at about 69. So that's the temperature of the house. So as you can see, that's quite a quite a delta, and the temperature probe for that is like actually at the top of the rack. So it's quite a delta change from um, 69 to 76 at the top of the room and at the base of the room. So I, I guess for this one, I'll just kind of stick somewhere in the middle. That way it's just like, it's basically always on, or maybe I'll just make it always on. Here's the final, well, maybe not final, but the final look at what I've done so far. Still some adjustment required, but I think for now it's just good proof of concept. And uh, yeah, it looks fine. Of course, we have to lock the LCD panel for any would-be kids that come to try and tamper with this, but um, we're pretty much done getting this thing in the door. So with the fan installed now, all we need to do is basically just wait and see what happens. So from here, I'm literally just gonna let a few days go by and just keep an eye on the temperature of the room overall, and hopefully we can bring down the temperature of the top of the room the most, because that is where it gets hot outside. And unfortunately, it's going to be pretty cold in the next couple of days. I don't know if that's unfortunate or not, because we know that it's like 80 something degrees inside the closet at the top, well, even when it's cold outside. So regardless of the temperature outside, I'm hoping that we can get the room close to the temperature of the house. Um, and yeah, well, only time will tell. So we're going to let that run for a few days, keep an eye on it. And hopefully this is all we need to do for now. Um, I'm going to go turn the rest of the equipment on so I can get a more realistic idea of how hot it might be in there with everything running. So I'll do that and we'll check in in a few days and see what the results are. Three weeks later. It's been just over three weeks, but only barely, and we've learned a few things. One, the temperature still averages around 81 degrees at the very top of the room. 81 degrees Fahrenheit, that is, at the very top of the room. And then in the middle areas of the room, it's basically between 74 to 77 degrees, depending on the outside temperature of the air. Um, and then towards the base of the room, the air that's coming in is basically just as cold as the house is. So whatever the temperature of the house is, um, it's basically the same. So around like 66 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit. And there is some times in there when it's a little bit lower, but generally, averages speaking, it's between 66 and 67, but I have definitely seen it as low as 61 degrees um, when coming into the, to the room. But overall, the temperature of the room really hasn't dropped much unless you're at the bottom of the room. So to me, my interpretation of this that means that while we're getting enough air into the room, we're not expelling enough of the hot air at the top of the room because we only dropped from about 84 degrees Fahrenheit to 81, and it's not even summer yet. So I think what I, I think what the real problem is, is that we're just not exhausting enough hot air. We don't have enough CFM to expel all the hot air. So that basically means we have to add either another fan or add a better exhausting system, or of course add a mini split. That's what everyone wants me to do, but we're not doing that. That is way too expensive. I uh, got my quote back for that, and again, that was like, you know, $5.2 thousand dollars or whatever, so we're not doing that, uh, even though it's competitive. Um, we're just going to have to install a fan, uh, another fan to get our CFM, or our exhaust CFM up. Alright, so for my next trick, we're basically just going to destroy the house, and we're going to take this fan, and we're going to place it up here next to this fan. So, I'm about to get up there, cut a hole literally next to this uh, fan and that should give us about 400 CFM of exhaust, which I think will ultimately fix the issue Maybe not ultimately, but I'm hoping ultimately fix the issue. Uh, so that's gonna be experiment number two. Let's see what happens
one very cool feature about the AC Infinity Fan is that it comes with an extension cable where you can link two of them together with this one power cable. Uh, so it's really, it makes it really nice. So why does that make it nice? Is because now I don't need additional cables or additional power cables hanging outside of the wall. I can just link the two together and we're good to go. So I'm going to be using a one inch uh, spade. Or I'm sorry, this is actually not even one inch. This is one and three eighths inch of a spade. Uh, this is just about an inch wide. So it almost um, lines up exactly with this, almost. It's the only spade I have at this width. Everything else is smaller than this. So that's why I'm using a one and three eighths. Now, obviously, you know, you can use whatever at home works for you. So let's go drill some more holes in the wall and really just uh, screw up my house even more than I already have. So all I did, just so you guys can see, I drilled a small hole. We actually uh, changed bit sizes. I went down with, with the smaller one, uh, which I don't know where it is. Here we go. So it's actually 3 4 inch because, as you guys know, I'm not a very smart man. I actually am going to pass this through uh, this this way. So that way the, or well, I'm sorry, the other way. So, yeah, no, 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 I had it right. I'm going to pass this through this way uh, so that way the thick side can just stay on, in here. I'll show you what I mean. We just need to wire up this um, fan, so this exhaust fan, to this fan. Like I mentioned earlier, I passed through the cables that we need. One is for the sensor, and one is for power. So that's good to go. We don't need any other additional cables. We can literally just link these two together. And then I also need the power. Oh, I also need the power cable. So this fan's gonna kick on immediately. And the sensor. All right. And now here is the extension cable that we just need. So this is key to so there's actually a wrong way to put this in. You won't be able to put it in the wrong way, but it is keyed. We got it all wired up. I know it's hard to see because it's black. So power for the other fan, probe, power, goes through the wall. And then we have power right here and also probe. Now this fan isn't running, but it is powered on. So I just need to go to the other side and get this configured uh, so it'll start pulling air. Okay, one final look. Passive ventilation in front of the server closet. So let's get this door open so we can see the other side. All right, another passive grill, no forced air for this setup, this test. We got both of our exhaust fans set up. So they're exhausting air into the laundry closet. I have a temperature probe here, which I'm calling the middle of the room, temperature probe at the top, which we can't see. And then there's a temperature probe that hangs down right in front of these servers that you also can't see. So we'll know what the bottom air is like roughly the middle and then finally the top and of course all of this air gets exhausted into the laundry room over here and as we move into the laundry room we can see the two ventilation or i'm sorry grills where all of the hot air is being exhausted into this room so those, those two grills just cover up the hole on the other side of the fans and we can see the fans in the side of the server closet there so um that's basically the setup one week later. I'm cutting the experiment a lot shorter than I wanted to because I think the current implementation that we have is more than sufficient. I had always suspected that I wasn't just exhausting enough hot air out of the room because only 200 CFM was the max capable amount of air that I'd be able to move out of there with the one fan. But now that we have two, we can do upwards of 400. I've noticed that at the bottom of the room, the temperature of the air is roughly the same as the house. So whatever the house is set to, for instance, right now at 69 degrees Fahrenheit, the base of the room is 69.4 degrees. So it's basically the same as the rest of the house. 
for all purposes. And then as we move towards the middle of the rack, the temperature obviously increases because heat is rising. And that temperature is usually between 74 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, again, depending on the outside temperature of the house and the temperature of the house itself. It turns out that 81 degrees Fahrenheit is actually the temperature of the air coming out of the back of the network equipment or the air trapped inside the network rack itself, which is always warm. But we are down about three degrees from 84 degrees Fahrenheit to 81 degrees Fahrenheit, so we are now pulling enough air out of the room. Now, when you actually wave your arm around in the room, you can actually feel that the room overall is cooler, but because of where the temperature probe is, I'm getting the illusion that the room is actually more warm than it truly is. So of course the air coming out of the network rack would be hotter than the actual room itself because that's literally where the air is coming out of. So with moving the temperature probe somewhere, I don't know, roughly at the top of the room and seeing the temperature difference dropping from 81 degrees Fahrenheit to 76 degrees Fahrenheit tells me that the room was probably not nearly as hot as I thought it used to be, although when I did step in the room a long time ago, it was definitely very warm. Whereas now the temperature difference between the house and the room itself is a lot more close. It's definitely warmer in the server closet, but it's not warmer or more warm than it used to be in the past, at least in this current configuration. So there definitely was some testing in my, or errors in my testing previously, which uh, unfortunately I guess happens. But overall, the, we had the effect that we wanted. The temperature of the room is actually lower. Uh, especially depending on where you put those probes. So I've obviously after moving the top of the room probe where it's now just hanging off the ceiling and also moving the second probe in the middle of the room towards the back of the room and also um, where the, all the hot air of the servers rises up. And that was only around like 73 or 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So even getting directly blasted with hot air from the back of the servers, I was surprised that that was as low as it was. So basically that means I think we finally solved the riddle or the problem, the heat problem. Adding that second fan has definitely helped a lot. And then obviously having your probes in probably a more appropriate place to give you a better idea of the temperatures. But in this configuration, I actually kind of like it. When you open the door now, there's not cables that are in the way that you have to deal with or worry about cable managing. Those passive vents or the passive grills just allow air to pass into the room or be pulled into the room because we're creating negative pressure. And in the future, if we do need to add more air into the room, I can simply add a fan to the front of the door, giving us a little bit more positive pressure inside of the room. But I don't think we need to do that. I think at least at this point with all the hardware that's currently in there that's running, I think we're good. Those two fans can spin up higher, giving us more CFM being exhausted out of the room and into the laundry room. So I don't think there's any more I actually need to do. And I hope this is the final solution because the only thing else to do from here besides adding another fan to the front of the door would be adding a more elaborate um, cooling solution, something like a mini split or a rack mounted AC unit, like something that trip light would provide or has. But I don't think I need to get there. So I guess to be continued, although I feel like we've solved it, I'm not really sure. I guess only time will tell. But for right now, I'm super happy with the results. The closet is definitely a lot more cool and I kind of wish that I would have moved that probe to be hanging from the top of the ceiling much earlier than just letting it sit at the top of the network rack because I think that may have skewed our results in the past and they've definitely screwed, skewed our results for this video. So with all that being said, guys, I'm gonna thank each and every single one of you for watching and I will see you next time. Peace.